Hi, I'm Heather from Going Batty, and today I am going to be doing a new crochet video. All right, so this video was kind of inspired by my ear warmer video, which um, actually is one of my most watched videos. Um, so what we're gonna do today is kind of on that same lines. We are going to make a scarf and this is an infinity scarf. So it's just a circle. It's super simple to do. Um, it's one kind of stitch, you make your chain and then it's kind of one kind of stitch all the way through. So you can finish it relatively quickly. Um, you know, for a beginner, this might take you maybe about two, maybe three hours to do. Um, so I, I will show you what it looks like on. So if you know anything about infinity scarves, like they're made to be worn like this, and then you can wrap them around and it becomes more kind of cow-like and you can move it around. So they're really pretty, they're really warm. So I am gonna show you how to make this scarf. Right, so this is what you're gonna need. You're gonna need um, a pretty bulky yarn. This here is the um, Hometown USA yarn by Lion Brand. I really like this yarn. Um, it makes projects go really fast because it's kind of bulky. Um, one of the things that you need to look for is when you're buying your yarn, make sure that it comes from the same um, lot. And you'll see, I don't know if you can see right here where it says lot and it has a number there. You want both of yours to say that because that means it came from the same dye lot number because sometimes what'll happen is that you'll have where your yarn will not quite match each other and you don't want that. The next thing that you're gonna need is a pretty good size crochet hook. Um, this one here is an N, it's a 10 millimeter one. Uh, it's pretty big. Uh, like I said, I like this because it works well with this yarn. You're gonna need a tapestry needle that has a pretty big eye on it. So I don't know, see how big that is? Because you're gonna have to get this yarn through that hole to finish your ends up. The other thing you're gonna need is a good pair of scissors. All right, so we're gonna start out by making a slip knot. Now I leave a tail that's a pretty long on my stuff, just so that I, it's easier to um, weave into your finished project. Um, if you have it super short, it's really hard to do that. So I leave probably a good, like, I don't know, that's maybe like five inches. And so I'm gonna make a slip knot. So I wrap it around my fingers like this, and then you just push that in through. I grab it with my hook, and there you go. So you have a slip knot. Now, what you want to do, you're gonna chain 90. So um, if you don't know what a chain is, you're going to take your yarn, you're gonna put it over your hook, you're gonna, I twist mine, and then pull it through like that. That's a chain. Now you wanna make sure, and this is called your foundation chain, you're gonna wanna make sure that this is kind of loose. You don't want it super tight. You actually want it pretty loose because you're gonna have to get all of your other stitches into this. So I'll show you again. You take your yarn, you hook it, you twist it, you pull it through. Now, if you can see my chain here, I'll pull my hook out. It's pretty loose. It's not, it's not done super tight. So um, I'll show you again. You take your yarn, you put it over your hook, and you pull it through, just like that. Now, you're gonna do 90 of these. So I will finish my chain and I will meet you back when I'm done with it. So I have 85, 86, 87, 88, 89, 90. So I've got my chain done here and hopefully you guys can see, like it's pretty loose. Like you can actually kind of see through the stitches and that's what you're wanting with this. 
So what you're gonna do to make this an infinity scarf. Now, if you don't, you can just make it a regular scarf and just keep working your rows back and forth. But um, you wanna make sure that you have this straightened out and that it's not twisted because if it's twisted, your, your scarf's gonna be twisted. And so what you're going to do is straighten it all out. You're gonna bring the end over to meet this end. So the end that you started with. Now you can work in the tops of each of your stitches here um, and that'll be fine, but I actually like to work into, you'll have like these, if you flip it over, you'll have these like ridges on the back. Kind of like, I, I kind of think of it like, you know, when you were a kid and you would learn about the stegosaurus and he had ridges on his back. So that's what I'm gonna be working in because it gives your bottom a little more of a finished edge where you can't tell which is the bottom and which is the top. So what we're gonna do is we're going to slip stitch, which means you're going to take your crochet hook, you're going to put it into that first loop like that. And you're gonna take your yarn, not your tail, but your yarn you're working with, and you're going to put your yarn over, and then you're gonna pull through both loops. And so that is your slip stitch. So you finished an entire, your, your chain. And so what's gonna happen is that you're, um, you're going to work now into the, each of these ridges, but you're going to um, have your turning chain, which means you're going, since we're gonna be working double crochets, you're going to chain two. So one, two, and these don't have to be nearly as loose as your your um, your foundation chain was. So um, so what we're going to do is now we're going to double crochet into each of those ridges. So you're going to put the yarn over your hook like that. You're going to go through that first ridge, and if you've done your chain right, it'll be really easy to slip it in there. And then you're going to put the yarn over. You're gonna pull through that first loop. So you should have three, one, two, three. And then you're going to put the yarn over your hook again, pull through two of your loops. So one, two, now you only have two on your hook right here. And then you're gonna yarn over again and pull through two more. So that is your first double crochet. And this is the stitch that we're going to do the entire time. So it gives you practice on doing your double crochet. So I'll do it again. So we're gonna put our yarn over our hook, put it through that loop. You're gonna put your yarn over it again, pull through. Now you have three, one, two, three there, if you can see that. You're gonna put the yarn over again, pull through two of those. Now you've only got two, one, two, right there if you can see them. And then yarn over, pull through two again. All right, so we're gonna do it again. Put your yarn over your hook, go through that stitch there, the ridge. So now you've got three, one, two, three. You're gonna put your yarn over your hook and pull through that first one. So now you got three on there. One, two, three, again. Put the yarn over your hook, pull through two of them, and then put the yarn over and pull through two more. And as you go, this will start to get easier. So, and it'll just be, you're doing the same stitch over and over and over and again. And then when I come to the end, I will show you how to join it together. All right, so I've come back to the end where I began. Now what you wanna do is you want to kind of lay it on top of itself, kind of like this to make sure that you haven't gotten it twisted anywhere. So what we're gonna do is we're actually going to slip stitch again. So really the only stitches that you need to know for this scarf is you need to know how to chain, 
you need to know your double crochet and you need to know a slip stitch. Just those three and you're gonna be able to do this. So what we're gonna do is right here is our starting chain. So if you guys can see that, so there's one, two, and then right here is where it starts to go into your first double crochet that you did. So there is a little V up here. And what you're going to do is you're gonna slip stitch underneath that V. So if you can see, there's a string here, there's your V here, and then there's your stitches that go along this way. So you're gonna take it, put your hook in, put your yarn over, and then pull through both of them just like that. And that closes your loop. So now what you're gonna do is you're gonna just start the process all over again. So you're gonna do chain two, and then in each of these V's, you're gonna go uh, under both strings where on your um, foundation stitch, you kind of went under that ridge. You're gonna go through both here. So where this V is, you're gonna stick your hook underneath both of them, except you're gonna put your yarn around your hook first, and then you're gonna stick it through both of them, put your yarn around, pull that yarn through both of those, and now you've got your three, one, two, three on there. So put your yarn over your hook, pull through two of them, put your yarn on your hook, pull through two more. So I'll show you that again. You're gonna take your hook, put your yarn over it. You're gonna go under both of those. So you have like a V on top yarn over your hook, pull it through. So now you've got three, one, two, three. Yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over, pull through two more, just like that. And I'll do a couple more with you. So yarn over your hook, put it through your stitch, pull it through, pull through two of them, pull through two more. And it'll start to get easier as you go. So, and it, it'll just become, it actually is like there, you'll get a rhythm going. And it's a great way for you to make a handmade gift for somebody that you care about. Um, I make all of my kids hats, scarves, things like that. And they're funny because they say that there's, you know, their, their hat was made with love or their scarf was made with love. And it was. So these make great gifts that you can give for Christmas or if somebody has like a winter birthday or you know things like that so you're gonna just keep doing this stitch over and over again and you're gonna do eight rows high and um, I will meet you back when I'm done with all of my eight rows and I'll show you how to finish this off So as I'm doing this, I was thinking about, um, at some point you are going to have to get into your other skein of yarn. So um, when you do that, I will actually show you how to do it where you can make a knot that is almost, you almost can't see it at all. Now, one other thing that you will run into sometimes is you will run into where, um, I've run into it where the yarn actually from the manufacturer, I'm sorry, the manufacturer has like pulled and snapped and they have tied it back together. Don't ever use that knot that they use. It's awful, You're, it, it's just terrible. So um, when I get to where I have to change to my next skein of yarn, I will show you how to do the knot that I'm talking about. Um, the other thing I wanted to talk to you guys about too is that um, this kind of yarn here, they have some that are really pretty and they're like variegated and they have um, like one where it's black and gray and it has some pink in it and it is beautiful. I, I do like it a lot, but you have to watch out because it doesn't have as much yarn in it as this. So when you're looking at it, it will tell you on here, like right here on the back, it'll tell you there's 81 yards of yarn in this ball. Now in some of the fancier ones, I think it's only 61. So you will be like 20 yards short. <laughs> so um, if you're gonna do it with a fancier yarn from this brand, 
I would get three of these instead of two. Okay, so I was getting ready to show you the knot. So this is what I'm talking about. It has broken somewhere at the factory and I had all these plans to show you right away, but then my husband and my kids came home with um, donuts from Cowboy Donuts. And I had to stop what I was doing because they have like the best donuts around. So, all right, so what I did is I cut that knot out because you don't wanna use that. When I first started crocheting, I would just let it go. It is hard to hide. Um, it will come undone, don't use that. So what you're gonna do is I've got quite a bit left here. You're gonna make two slip knots. So you take it and tie your slip knots. And what you want is you want the tail to be facing this way with your first one. So you're gonna tie it like that. So that tail is facing this way. Now with your other one, you pull it out enough so that you have enough to make it. The tail on this one's gonna be facing this way with this string. So make your slip knot. Pull it. And so what you're gonna do is you're gonna pull both of these pretty tight when you make it. And then you're gonna pull it to where they meet each other and you're gonna pull it super tight. I mean, as tight as you can and not have the string break. Then what you're gonna do is you're gonna cut the tails off as close as you can to the knot. Now you're gonna think, oh, Heather, that's gonna come out. It won't. I, I've done this over and over and over again and it's not ever come out. So try not to cut your knot at all, but cut those tails right off next to me. And see, I'm pulling on it and it's not coming loose. So <clears throat> this is gonna be a lot less easy to see than that mess there. So that's what you're gonna use when, cause I'm almost at the end here. So you're gonna use that same um, technique to add your next uh, skein of yarn to it. So. You're gonna just continue, and I'll show you how it kind of hides in once you, um, once you have it done. So we're gonna, so it just pulled in, and now it's underneath right here, and you won't see it. So it's hidden, and you don't really see it at all. I'm on my last two stitches here. So I'm gonna show you how to finish this scarf up and how to tie the ends in. So here's my last stitch. So what you're gonna do is, again, you're gonna go into that top um, of your chain. So you chain two, so one, two, and then that third one there where it starts into your, um, into your, double crochets, you're going to go into that. And then what you're going to do is you're actually gonna chain one more and then you're going to cut your, your yarn. So I'm gonna give it about five to six inches there. And then you're gonna pull it all the way through. So that finishes off your work right there. All right, so we have our end here on the top and then our end on the bottom. This one is a little frayed, so I'm just gonna go ahead and cut that off. And then you twist it real good and put it through your needle. And it might take you a couple of tries because this is kind of a thick thread. So any like frayed part, just snip that off. and just kind of be patient and work it through like that. All right, so now what you're gonna do, this is the bottom, is I, I try not to weave it too much through like right here. What I actually try to do is go down into here because it can come out real easily in here. So you're gonna look at your stitches and go, okay, just kind of weave it in like this. And 
and I just kind of move it kind of around and try to hide it in my stitches that I have done down below. And then what I'll do is I'll start moving it back up so that way it doesn't come out very easily. Now what you're going to do is you're going to kind of pull it tight a little bit, snip that off, and then stretch it out and hide that end, just like that. So that's one end and I'll show you the other end. The other thing that I wanted to tell you and I didn't tell you before is, so this is the right side of it. When I stitch this in, I do it on the wrong side so that you don't see it. So you can kind of tell like there's a difference in how it looks. This is the wrong side. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing here where I weave it down into the stitches that I did the thread through and I, I go pretty far down just because it just helps hide it better and then I'm going to turn and move back up so that way you can't see where it starts and where it begins just like that And then I'm going to pull it tight, snip it off, and then pull it through like that. And so now you can't see it at all. So that is all done. And we have our infinity scarf here. All right, so our project is finished now. Um, this, like I said, I've been crocheting for a while, and this took me about maybe an hour an hour and a half to do um now don't be afraid like if you are just learning it's okay if you mess up and you have to pull things out and start i still have to do that i'll lose count of something or i'll do a stitch wrong or something like that and it's okay i'm sorry it's my dog so um you do a stitch wrong and you have to pull something out and start over again and that's okay that's part of the learning process but this is our infinity scarf and I'll show you. This one's in gray. This one actually matches the hat that I, I made for myself. So. And so you can just. And the good thing about these kind of scarves too is that they'll, they'll over time stretch out and stuff like that. But um, for winters around here, we live in Wyoming. And so it starts getting cold in October. <laughs> so, and it stays cold until like. April so um but this is nice and thick it's nice and warm um and like I said before it'll make a great Christmas gift if somebody has a birthday in the uh, winter time it would make a great gift for them too so make sure you like and subscribe leave any questions or comments down below and I'll try to answer them and if you would like if there was a particular project that you would like me to show you how to do please leave that down below too, whether it's um, making a simple hat, making um, a pot holders or an oven mitt set or something like that, just let me know. Leave it down below. Um, I'm Heather from Going Batty, and thanks for watching. Bye.